One of the most fun things about learning and playing jazz is exploring jazz chords and all the beautiful colors you can add to them while you're improvising with them. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take a really basic voicing like this one and then end up with voicings like these. And this is also a great way to start learning how to make your own chord voicings, really explore the harmony and learn the fretboard better. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. The first thing to do is to build a foundation, to just have a basic version of the chord so that we know how that sounds. And in jazz, the core sound of a chord is usually determined by the third and the seventh. So shell voicings are a great place to start because here we have the root, the third and the seventh. So that's just a basic way of spelling out the sound of the chord. And we have a few different ways that we can play this. The first two are really useful if you're comping, especially if you're playing without a bass player. And the second two are really useful as upper structures, something that's going to become more important later in the video. When we're exploring major seven voicings, like we are in this video, then one thing that's really useful to also notice is that whenever you want to play a tonic major chord or a major seven chord, then you can also most of the time play a major six chord. And that just means that we have a lot more options available, a lot more different colors, and sometimes it's also going to make things a lot easier to play. So instead of just playing a C major seven, then you can also play a C6. And some practical C6 shell voicings would be something like this. Notice that these C6 shell voicings are in fact just A minor triad inversions. Now even though all these shell voicings are simple and don't really have a lot of notes, you can still play beautiful things with them, like this standard. The next thing to do is to add some more colors to these voicings. Since shell voicings both sound great and are very practical three note voicings, then it makes sense to expand on them by just starting to add some extensions or some extra notes to them. And that's actually fairly easy to do if you start with basic voicings like this. The first version of the shell voicing is of course just C, E and B. And a great option here is to add the ninth on top of that. So this voicing, but you can also add the root or double the third. If we take the other shell voicing, so the one up here, now an obvious choice is to add the G in here, so this. But you can also turn it into a C major seven with a 13 like this, or even a C major seven sharp 11 like this. And the way that I'm adding more notes and extensions to these chords is really simple because I'm just playing the shell voicing and then looking at what is available around it, what's playable, what sounds good. Let's check out how this sounds if you use it on a song. And if you use these voicings in a song, then you could get something like this. The next thing you want to do is to start playing rootless voicings. And that's because that's going to give more space for the bass player, so that means a happy bass player. But it also frees you up to create more movement and add more colors to the jazz chords that you're playing, which may result in a less happy bass player. If we focus on this voicing from the previous section, the upper structure of this chord voicing is an E minor triad. So if we throw away the root, then we have B, E and G which is a second inversion, E minor triad. Now this is not that strange at all because if you look at a C major seven, then that's C, E, G and B. And of course the three upper notes here is E, G and B. That's an E minor triad. So this means that we can now just throw away the root, leave that to the bass player, and then we can play just the E minor triad. But then we can also play the inversions. So that means that we now have these three voicings. And just as a short side note, if you add the root back into these voicings, you also probably recognize them as C major seven voicings.
comping with these smaller, more compact three note voicings is in fact a lot easier and actually also sounds a lot better. And if you want to explore all the endless possibilities that you have with uh, triad voicings and how you can use them for jazz chords, then I'm linking to a video in the description that goes over that. Here, I'm just gonna show you how this sounds. So let's check out how you can comp Ladybird using triad voicings. In the previous section, I took the top part of the chord and then I went over the inversions of that. But it actually makes sense to also cover the inversions of the entire chord, and especially when it comes to the drop two voicings. And we already had one example of a drop two voicing because that's this C major seven voicing. And the inversions of this voicing would be something like this. And it makes sense to also check these out on the top string set because there they're extremely useful. Adding different extensions to the drop two voicings is definitely also something you want to explore because there are a lot of options. So we can start with this C major seven. And of course we can just add a nine to that one. That would give us this one. And we can also play a 13 instead of the fifth. So we have a 9-13 voicing. Or maybe turn this into a 6-9 voicing. So that would be starting with this and then instead of the seventh, we're gonna play a six. Instead of the root, we're gonna play a nine, so. Or maybe a major seven, sharp 11. And in fact, instead of the nine, we can also play the 13. That would be a 13, sharp 11, like this. So you can do really a lot with all the drop two inversions and get amazing sounding chords. Let's check out how you can take some fairly basic drop two voicings and then come through Afternoon in Paris. As you saw already in the section with the triads, then if you take the top part of the voicing and then make some inversions, then you get some really useful sounds that you can do a lot with. And actually you can do this also when the top part of the chord is not a triad. So an obvious choice here would be this chord voicing. Now here the top part of the voicing is definitely not a triad, but that doesn't mean that we can't make inversions of it. That would be something like this. And these all work and sound great as major seven nine voicings, but you can also add some colors to it. That would be something like this. If we start down here with this inversion, we can add the sharp 11 on top. We can also add the 13. For the next inversion, then the 13 is of an obvious choice like this, which is also a great sound with this sus four triad on top. You could also make a version with the root but that's not a really great sounding voicing. Then for the final inversion here, we don't really have that many options because most stuff was just gonna be doubling things that are already in the chord. So the sharp 11 is probably the best option. And of course, all these colorful chords sound amazing on a standard like this. huge advantage with major seven chords is that they already sound resolved or at rest. And that means that they're actually really great for reharmonizations because you can put a lot of stuff together, but if you reharmonize with major seven chords, then chances are that the progression is not going to sound harsh. If you wanna see how this works and how you can really reharmonize a lot of different progressions using major seven chords, then check out this video.